Shalom, Malekum, peace be upon you, and welcome back to the broadcast. Today, we're actually going to look at this week's prophets portion. This may be something I continue to do through the rest of the year. We'll just have to see uh, something I'm considering. Uh, since it is a year where we're going to be heavily focusing on Bible prophecy, I thought it might be interesting to follow the prophets portion schedule instead of the Torah portion schedule. Um, additionally, I've brought this up before, but I'll say it again. You can go to the YouTube channel and just search for the name of this week's Torah portion, and you'll have like two or three videos to choose from. So there's plenty of that there for you to seek out. Real quick, in case you're not sure what the prophet's portion is, I have an article on the website. It's very short. I'll just read it real quickly so that you know what it is. It's actually called the Half Torah. It doesn't mean Half Torah. <laughs> That's just the Hebrew name, Half Torah. So the weekly prophet's portion, or the Half Torah, which means parting or taking leave, is a scheduled reading from the Bible books of the prophets, which follow along with the weekly Torah portion reading schedule. The Torah portion schedule has been followed by synagogues around the world since the Babylonian captivity of the Hebrews, or maybe even longer. Some suggest the tradition was started by the scribe Ezra. It is unknown why the tradition of the weekly prophets portion was instituted, but many believe the Haftorah was a response to Jewish Jewish persecution in which the weekly Torah portion readings were forbidden. All right, so that's all I'm going to read from that. It's also kind of unknown if um, the portions were selected to actually go along with the weekly Torah portion or if they were completely separate, uh, but often you'll find that they do correspond fairly well as an example the prophet's portion we're going to be reading today is from 1 Kings chapter 18, and it's about Elijah kind of standing against the prophets of Baal, right? These idol worshipers. Well, if you look at this week's Torah portion, it's the story in Exodus that deals with the golden calf. So they definitely have a feeling of corresponding. All right. Let's focus on what we're here to focus on today, which is 1 Kings chapter 18. The portion is verses 1 through 39. So we have Elijah confronting Ahab, and then this whole thing on Mount Carmel with the prophets of Baal. And honestly, it just, the, the word of God is living and even though this is a kind of a bizarre story, it really speaks to us today because this is really our circumstance. We're few in number. And we're up against large numbers of people who literally, whether they know it or not, many of them would be a not, some of them do know it, are worshiping uh, evil entities, worshiping Satan openly. We had the arches of Baal that tr that the world governments the world government traveled through all the nations. You remember that whole fiasco, and it was in New York City for a few weeks. I mean, these people are crazy. Well, this is what we're up against, and so I think this will be an interesting story for us this morning. It's a short read, so it won't take us long. Like I said, thirty six verses, uh, but we will be doing a little bit of a kind of like a Hebrew study along the way. And so I pray that you'll enjoy it. All right, let's begin. So we don't run out of time with our uh, commentary. Let's just look at the word. I'm going to read from the Hallelujah Scriptures, but I'm going to translate some things on the fly uh, to kind of make it easier to understand. And we'll kind of stop and talk about a few things. All right, let's begin. First Kings chapter 18. And after many days, it came to be that the word of Jehovah came to Eliyahu, or Elijah, in the third year, saying, Go, present yourself to Ahab, and I will give rain on the earth. Now, Eliyahu, or Elijah, that name 
Eliyahu actually means something along the lines of God of the God of Jehovah. It's it's kind of a bizarre name. Um but you can kind of see it in its pronunciation, right? You got you have El at the beginning, which is means God, and you have Yahoo, which usually refers to Yah in some way. I'm bringing that up not because I want to talk about Elijah's name, but we're going to talk about um, what is translated in the Bible is. Let me go look at it. Is it Obadiah? Yeah, Obadiah is how it's translated in the Bible. We're going to look at his name. Uh, here in a minute too. All right, let's continue on. So the word of, of Jehovah came to Elijah, say, go present yourself to Ahab. Verse two, thereupon Elijah went to present himself to Ahab and the scarcity of food in Shemeron was severe. And Ahab had called Obadiah or Obadiah who was over his house. Now Obadiah revered Jehovah exceedingly. And it came to be while Jezebel, Jezebel, cut down the Nebiim of Jehovah, that is to say the prophets of Jehovah, that Obadiah had taken 100 Nebiim and hidden them 50 to a cave and had fed them with bread and water. And Ahab had said to Obadiah, go into the land of all the springs of water and to all the waitas. It could be that we find grass to keep the horses and mules alive and not have any livestock cut off. And they divided the land between them to pass over it. Ahab went one way by himself, and Obadiah went another way by himself. So please note some interesting things to think about here. First of all, Obadiah, he is over the house of Ahab. So he's kind of like a really, really high person in this kingdom that's ruled by Jezebel and Ahab. And at the same time, he is hiding the prophets of God in these caves and bringing them food and water. And this is also during a time when food and water is really scarce and hard to find. In fact, Ahab says, I need you to go out and find water and grass so we can keep the livestock alive. Right? But Obadiah is secretly preserving the prophets of God, at least a hundred of them, right? He has 50 to a cave. He's hiding them. He's going out of his way. It says that he reveres Jehovah exceedingly. So he's, he, he has the highest regard and reverence for God, but the God of Israel. Yet he's with these Gentiles. And so uh, I was listening to, uh, I was actually listening to a program um, about the prophet's portion from Nehemiah Gordon. And he put forth an interesting thought, a speculation, that it's likely that Obadiah was a Gentile himself who had converted to the faith of believing in Jehovah and as a result started hiding these people. The interesting thing about his name, and it makes you wonder if, if this was the name he was going by uh, in this pagan kingdom ruled by Jezebel, um, because his name kind of, in a way, gives him away, right? Obadi- it's Obadiahu, which means serving Yah, or serving Yehovah. So, you know, names in Hebrew mean so much. And people complain that I'm always talking Hebrew and all this stuff when we do these Torah studies and we do studies uh, specifically uh, in the Old Covenant scriptures. But here's kind of my view. We live in a time where we have the greatest privilege that God's people have ever had, or at least the Gentiles church of God has ever had, which is the access to the original languages and access to unlimited amounts of teaching to learn it. There, Think about all the Christians for 
1,800 years who didn't have this privilege, who would have given anything to have this privilege. And then here we are, and we just treat it like it's, who cares? I mean, most Christians don't even read the Bible, their English translations, which is just a tragedy because that is not how the early church felt about God's word where it would just sit on the shelf and who cares I'll just go listen to some uh, motivational speech every Sunday and that'll be <laughs> that'll be the feeling that I get and we wonder why the Christian church acts like the rest of the world anyway I'm going on a tangent here the reason why I do this is because it's my great privilege to do it and most of you many of you at least you come to this podcast because you want to be scholars of God's word so Let's be grateful that we have access to learn and to look at the languages like this. So it's Obadiahu, serving Jehovah is the name of this guy. So he's hiding the prophets. And now we come to verse 7. And as Obadiah was on his way, then see Eliyahu, Elijah met him. And he recognized him and he fell on his face and he said, Is that you, my master, Elijah? And he answered him, it is I. Go say to your master, Elijah is here. And he said, What have I sinned that you are giving your servant into the hand of Ahab to kill me? As Jehovah your Elohim lives, there is no nation or region, or there is no nation or reign where my master has not sent to look for you. And when they said, He is not here, he made the reign or nation swear that they could not find you. And now you say, go, say to your master, Elijah is here. And it shall be as soon as I am gone from you, that the Ruach, that is to say the spirit of Jehovah, takes you away to a place that I do not know. And I shall come to report it to Ahab. And when he does not find you, he shall kill me. But I, your servant, have revered Jehovah from my youth. Okay, there's, there's actually a lot here. First off, Elijah shows up. Obadiah recognizes him right away. The prophet, the great prophet who has stopped all the rain, who's being hunted by Ahab, but no one's able to find him. But as we saw in the very first verse of chapter 18, Jehovah had come to Elijah and said, okay, it's time for you to go up here before Ahab. It's time for the showdown. So he shows up, Elijah meets Obadiah and says, go tell Ahab I'm here. Obadiah's like, are you trying to have me killed? I know what's going to happen. I'm going to go tell him that you're here. Then he's going to come look for you, but the Spirit of God is going to whiff you away somewhere, take you away where nobody knows, and then I'm going to get killed as a result. He also says two important things. Number one, I've revered Jehovah since my youth. Right, so we don't know when or how he ended up in the position he's at. Um, if he grew up in the pagan kingdom and was brought over when they took over Israel, or what the speculation is. What we do know is that from his youth, he's feared Jehovah. But, he's, but interestingly enough, he says, as Jehovah, your Elohim lives. He doesn't say our or my, which also lends to kind of that theory that Maybe he's a converted Gentile, but we don't know. Uh, the phrase there is Hi Yehovah Elohika, Elohika. Hi Yehovah Elohika. Yehovah, as Yehovah, your God lives. Maybe there's nothing there. I just thought it was interesting. Again, I didn't come up with that myself, um, but it's an interesting theory. It doesn't really matter. Um, all that really matters is that Obadiah has feared God from his youth. He has exceedingly revered Jehovah to the point where he's risking it all to hide the prophets of God in these caves. And now Elijah's telling him, go tell Ahab, I'm here. Verse 13. Was it not reported to my master what I did when Jezebel slew the Nebaim of Jehovah? How I hid 100 men of the Nebaim of Jehovah, 50 to a cave, and fed them with bread and water. And now you say, go say to your master, Elijah is here. 
and he shall slay me. And Elijah said, As Jehovah of hosts lives, before whom I stand, I shall indeed show myself to him today. And Obadiah went to meet Ahab and informed him, and Ahab went to meet Elijah. And it came to be when Ahab saw Elijah, that Ahab said to him, Is that you, O disturber of Yisrael? And he answered, I have not disturbed Yisrael, but you and your father's house, and that you have forsaken the commandments of Jehovah, and you have followed the Baals. And now you send and gather all Yisrael to me on Mount Carmel, the four hundred and fifty prophets of Baal, and the four hundred prophets of Asherah, who eat at Jezebel's table. Ahab then sent for all the children of Israel and gathered the prophets on Mount Carmel. And Elijah came to all the people and he said, How long would you keep hopping between two opinions? If Jehovah is Elohim, follow him, and if Baal, follow him. But the people answered him, Not a word. Please note. This is exactly the condition of God's people today on the fence, trying to straddle both sides. On one hand, wants to play with the world, participate with the world, serve ball. On the other hand, wants to go to church on Sunday and serve God and sing about how much Jesus loves them. This is the same scenario. The The Israelites didn't, weren't really picking a side. It was like, well, you know, we'll dip, we'll dip into this area of Baal. We'll dip into this area of Jehovah. And Elijah's saying, how long are you going to sit on the fence? It's time. You, only one of these can be the true God. And you need to decide for yourselves and pick one to serve. If it be Baal, follow him. And the people answered, not and Elijah said to the people, I alone and left. And Nabai, that is to say, a prophet of Jehovah, but the prophets of Baal are 450 men. Now let them give us two bulls and let them choose one bull for themselves and cut it in pieces and lay it on the wood, but light no fire. And I, I prepare the other bull and shall lay it on the wood and light no fire. And you shall call on the name of your mighty one and I shall call on the name of Jehovah. The Elohim who answers by fire. He is Elohim. So all the people answered and said, The word is good. And Elijah said to the prophets of Baal, Choose one bull for yourselves and prepare it first, for you are many. And call on the name of your mighty one, but light no fire. So they took the bull which was given them and prepared it and called on the name of Baal from morning until noon, saying, O oh, Baal, answer us. But there was no voice, and no one answered. And they leaped about the altar which they had made, and it came to be at noon that Elijah taunted them and said, Cry aloud, for he is a mighty one. He is meditating, or he is busy, or he is on a journey. Or it could be that he is asleep, and he has to be awakened. And they cried aloud and cut themselves according to their ruling with knives and spears until blood gushed out of them. And it came to be, when midday was past, that they prophesied until the time of bringing the offering, but there was no voice, no one answered, and no one paying attention. And Elijah said to the people, Come closer to me. And all the people came closer to him, and he repaired the altar of Jehovah that was broken down. And Elijah took twelve stones according to the number of the tribes of the sons of Yaakov, that is to say Jacob, to whom the word of Jehovah had come, saying, Yisrael is your name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of Jehovah, and he made a trench around the altar large enough to hold two simen of seed. And he arranged the wood, and he cut the bull in pieces and laid it on the wood, and said, Fill four jars with water and pour it on the burnt offering on the wood. And he said, do it a second time. And they did it a second time. And he said, do it a third time. And they did it a third time. And the water flowed around the altar and filled the trench with water too. And it came to be at the time of the bringing of the offering that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Jehovah Elohim of Avraham, Yitshak, and Yisrael, 
Let it be known today that you are Elohim in Yisrael, and I, your servant, have done all these matters by your word. Answer me, O Jehovah, answer me, and let this people know that you are Jehovah Elohim, and you shall turn their hearts back to you again. Then the fire of Jehovah fell and consumed the burnt offering, and the wood and the stones and the dust, and it licked up the water that was in the trench. And all the people saw and fell on their faces and said, Jehovah, he is Elohim. Jehovah, he is the Elohim. And that is where the prophet's portion ends. It actually ends at verse 39. Uh, I would highly recommend that you continue reading on your own. Uh, Because what happens next, let me just read verse 42. And Elijah, Eliyahu, said to them, Seize the prophets of Baal and do not let one of them escape. So they seized them and Eliyahu brought them down to the Wadi Kishon and slew them there. And Eliyahu said to Ahab, Go up, eat, drink, because of the sound of the noise of rain. I know it was a short broadcast this morning. I pray that it was a blessing to you. If there's a lesson in here for us today, it's do not straddle the fence. There is only one God. You cannot serve both God and God manna, right? You cannot chase the things of the world and serve God. It can't be done. If Baal be God, then serve him. But if Jehovah is God, then you have to get serious about your relationship with him. Now, as we talked on Wednesday, time is running out. The prophets of Baal certainly outnumber the prophets of God at this point, right? Just like in this story, but it doesn't matter. Because their God doesn't answer in the time of trouble. Their God can't protect them from the wrath to come. And it is coming. I want to thank all of you for your prayers and your support your financial support and the Patreon subscribers and the PayPal donators and those of you who send stuff in the mail. You make this happen week after week after week. This has been the great privilege and the great honor of my life to get up every morning to study God's word with all of you. I don't get it all right. I don't claim to. But it's been a great privilege of mine and I'm so grateful for this opportunity. I just want to say thank you and thank you for your prayers. That's all I have for you. Peace and grace be with all of you. And until next time, God bless.